Hi, I've finished an arc that comes out on the 14th of March. And last year I read Isaac and the Egg by Bobby Palmer and uh, I laughed, I cried, range of emotions in that one and I absolutely adored it. It was uh, it was one of the highlights of last year. So when I was offered the arc of his second book, well, of course, I was going to jump at it. So the you know, the thing was, you know, what did I expect last time? Last in Isaac and the Egg, we had a talking egg. So what was I going to get this time? And it's a talking fox. And this talking fox blends in so perfectly with this novel about family, about nature, about fractured relationships. Jack left home 15 years ago. Um, unable to connect with his father, Jerry, a man who immersed himself in the earth, in the woods, in nature. A man who didn't know how to talk to his son. Um, because the past got in the way of his relationship with his son, as you find out when you read the book. When he left home, Jack loosened the ties between the family and there was always an excuse why he didn't come home for Christmas. And he, he stayed away, he stayed away. And you know, the phone calls between him and his mum got less and less. And the relationship that he'd had with his sister Charlotte, that faded as well. In London, he believed he got everything. He got this fantastic job, um, a nice flat, and he didn't need his family. He didn't need this family in this rambling house on the edge of the woods. But in this job, his hours get longer and longer. He's arriving at the office before everybody. He's leaving the office after everybody. Um, he's basically burning out. And then his bosses call him into the office and say they've sold the company. And he's left with nothing. On the way back to his flat after being told that the company's sold, he rescues a fox. He sees a fox in distress, calls the animal rescue and rescues a fox. And then he receives a phone call from Charlotte saying that his mother's disappeared and he needs to come home. When he's there, he finds that his father has faded further and further away because he's suffering from an unnamed dementia. And his sister is resentful because she has shouldered the burden while Jack's been living the life in London. And she's had to put her own life onto hold, really. The story unfolds beautifully and sensitively. And you hear Jerry's voice, the dad's voice, his confused memories, his thoughts that are in the present, his love of nature the woods, the animals, the birds. We hear Jack's voice. We hear his anger that he felt as a young man when he couldn't connect to his father. The way that he, he wanted his father to be proud of him and his father never said he was proud of him. And we hear from the fox. Does it talk or doesn't it? You, you, you decide. But the fox guides Jack and Jerry as they find their way back. And interspersed with this, you've got Jack, sorry, Jerry and Hazel's love story, how they met, Hazel's Jack's mum, how they met and their love story. 
and this is a couple who were meant to be together. And the structure slides and weaves between all of these voices from past to present. And I thought it worked perfectly. It did for me. And there's real poetry sometimes in, in, in some sections. And there's this love of nature. And the love of nature that has been at the, the backbone of, that has been the foundation of Jerry. Jerry has always loved nature. And you have this nature at the base, the foundation of everything. And there's beauty in there from the skies to the birds to the fox. And yeah, you make up your own mind about the fox. His voice was special, but did they really hear it or didn't they? Who cares? It was a beautiful story. And it was a poignant read and I loved it. So that is Small Hours by Bobby Palmer. Did I tell you what the was called at the beginning? I can't remember whether I did, but you've got the picture here anyway, so who needs me? Um, comes out on the 14th of March. So happy reading. Take care.